Today we are set to explore one of the cornerstones of the horror genre, the gothic horror masterpiece, Dracula by Bram Stoker. Published in 1897, this novel has not only become a bedrock in horror literature, but also a cultural icon, transcending the confines of pages to dominate movies, TV shows, and more. Set against the contrasting backdrops of Transylvania and Victorian England, our journey begins with Jonathan Harker, a diligent English solicitor. He is traveling to the remote regions of Transylvania on a professional assignment, aimed at assisting the enigmatic Count Dracula in purchasing an English estate. The initial ambience of the castle, though eerie, does not immediately reveal its secrets. However, as Harker's stay progresses, he finds himself ensnared in a terrifying web. He encounters three predatory brides of Dracula and gradually uncovers the Count's unholy nature, his agelessness, his aversion to daylight, and most chillingly, his insatiable thirst for human blood. Parallel to Harker's harrowing experiences, back in England, Mina Murray, Harker's devoted fiancé, eagerly awaits his letters and eventual return. She spends her days with her dear friend, Lucy Westenra, in the coastal town of Whitby. Lucy, a picture of youthful vitality, soon becomes the epicenter of romantic interests from three distinct men, the intellectual Dr. John Seward, the adventurous American Quincy Morris, and the Honorable Arthur Honewood. Despite the varied proposals, Lucy's heart settles on Arthur. However, amidst this blooming romance, something malevolent casts a shadow on Lucy. She begins to display peculiar behaviors, notably sleepwalking. One evening, Mina finds her in a compromising position with a dark figure in the churchyard, and soon after, mysterious marks appear on Lucy's neck. Witnessing Lucy's alarming and inexplicable deterioration, Dr. Seward, baffled, enlists the expertise of his former professor, the knowledgeable professor Abraham Van Helsing. Upon examination, Van Helsing discerns the dark truth. Lucy is under the influence of vampirism. In a desperate bid to save her, he employs a combination of ancient knowledge and merging science. Blood transfusions are administered and protective garlic is scattered. But their efforts are in vain, Lucy succumbs, only to rise again as one of the undead. This leaves the group with the heart-wrenching task of putting her to eternal rest. Meanwhile, Harker's ordeal in Transylvania reaches a climax. He orchestrates a daring escape from the clutches of Dracula and his brides, eventually finding solace in a convent in Hungary. Here, he reunites with Mina, and the two, now bound by their shared horrors, marry. Upon their return to England, they are met with the grim realization that the terror is far from over. Dracula has set foot on English soil. His motives soon become clear as he turns his sinister attentions to Mina. Harker, Van Helsing, Dr. Seward, Morris, and Holmwood form a united front against this ancient evil. Their battle against Dracula is a blend of intellect, strategy, and sheer courage. Dracula's vulnerabilities become their weapons. Armed with the knowledge that Dracula is weakened by daylight, cannot enter a place uninvited, and must rest in his native soil, they embark on a mission to locate and sanctify the boxes of Transylvanian earth he brought with him. The narrative takes a dramatic turn when Dracula, in a show of dominance, forces Mina to drink his blood. This vile act, however, grants Mina a psychic bond with the Count, enabling her to trace his movements. As the group tightens the noose around Dracula, the Count makes a desperate bid to return to his homeland. This results in a high-stakes chase, with the team splitting up to close in on him from all fronts. Their pursuit culminates in a fierce confrontation at Dracula's castle. The battle sees the end of the menacing Count, but also the brave Morris. Stoker's portrayal of Dracula serves as a multifaceted reflection of Victorian England's societal undercurrents. The Count can be interpreted as the embodiment of the era's anxieties regarding foreign influences, possibly a nod to the period's colonial undertones and xenophobic tendencies. Moreover, the book grapples intensely with the theme of repressed sexuality. The transformation of women from the epitome of Victorian propriety to predatory creatures of the night, challenges, and upen societal norms of the time. Additionally, Dracula is a mirror to the tussle between old-world superstitions and emerging modern science. The diverse methods employed to combat the Count, from time-honored practices to cutting-edge medical procedures, encapsulate the struggle. This amalgamation is symbolic of an era poised on the cusp of the modern age yet tethered to its past. To encapsulate Dracula by Bram Stoker is a richly layered narrative, 
one that goes beyond its surface horror to engage with socio-cultural themes of its age. Its lasting appeal is a testament to its intricate characterizations, atmospheric settings, and the universal struggle between light and darkness. For those who revel in the exploration of classic literary treasures and their nuanced interpretations, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. We consistently endeavor to provide insightful content that satiates your literary appetite. Until our next engagement with another literary marvel, I wish you enlightening reading experiences.